everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about a particularly bad invasive species in the Indian Mountain West. This is Euphorbia myrosinites, also known as Myrtle Spurge. And I want to show you how to remove this plant safely without causing injury to yourself. But first, let's talk about the plant. It is native to the um, southeastern Europe and the northeast Mediterranean, so from Turkey westward towards Italy. And it was originally brought to the Indian Mountain West as a sort of water-wise ornamental. It has a very cool appearance, and it is indeed quite drought tolerant. So it was thought to be a very environmentally conscious choice for the for the region, but it has since um, spread absolutely out of control and is quite invasive of the species. And what made it such a great choice for an ornamental now is what makes it such a bad weed. Now it's um it's like all euphorbias. It's got a, um, a milky latex, which is quite toxic if you get it on your skin, and that skin is exposed to sunlight. It will cause serious burns if it gets in your eyes. It will cause blindness. And if you ingest it, it can cause it's quite toxic, you know. So I'm gonna soon try to break off a piece to show you the sap. Um, to identify it, you can see it's got these. Uh, it's, maybe you can't see very well because it's washed out when I was filming, but it's got these bluish green leaves, which are. Yeah, we're kind of raging a spiral pattern on the stems. All right, here I'm going to try and break a piece off. And a second, there we go. And again, it's kind of washed out, so it's hard to see, but you can sort of see the milky sap right there. But anyways, in addition to that, it's got this sort of yellow inflorescence at the tip. They're not actually flowers, but they're um, very yellow. It's a yellow inflorescence, so it's a collection of flowers growing together. It's, it's kind of hard to see here, but um, this really like, trust me on this. <laughs> it's... Um, yeah, and like that's um, that was uh, that's a pretty big um, indicator. Those few features in combination should be enough to identify it for you, and you won't mistake it for any others. The only plant that really looks a little bit similar to it is Dalmatian toad flax, and that's also invasive, so you might as well pull it up. And um, as you can see in a second, all these stems are all growing out of one point right there, um, in the ground from a caudus. So it's a perennial that develops sort of woody root. And um, these stems will they'll die and they'll be replaced by new ones. So you'll sometimes see quite a lot of dead stems at the bottom of it, but not right now. And um, anyways, I'm gonna show you how to remove it in a second. You're gonna wanna wear rubber gloves as I have on there, or perhaps just regular work gloves, either or works, but it will um, leave a, the latex will harden on the gloves and become quite gunky and useless. And I swear it will not wash off. Like it's very, it's tough to get it out. So perhaps just try rubber gloves. Now, you're going to also wear a long sleeve shirt because, again, if it gets on your skin, it can be pretty bad. And anyways, you're going to want to try and grab it from the base on a big individual like this. Like, you make sure you really look for it. And then you can pull, hopefully, pull it out all at once, just like that, and there you go. Now, this isn't going to grow back from the root, thankfully, because we pulled the whole thing out. Sometimes it will snap at the root, though, and you got to be careful about that because it can, uh, it can grow back from there. I'll talk about that in a second. But there you go. So very often this plant, it will, I said, it'll break at the root sometimes, which is unfortunate because it can easily grow back from the root. In that case, you might want to try and dig it out. It's like a shovel or something. And uh, yeah, just try and get the whole root out because it, it definitely will grow afterwards. It's, the root's very um, hardy and it can store a lot of energy inside of it. So yeah, but that's how you um, remove it safely. Now, as you can see, there's just a ton of individual plants came up in a surprisingly small area. And this is what often happens. Like a lot of them get established in a, really small patch of dirt so you've got to be careful to remove them all lest a few of them survive now also they really like this sort of talus slope habitat i'm not entirely sure why but if you're removing them from this kind of um substrate you got to be careful because they can be coming up right underneath rocks and without you even noticing it no it's really nice but it just comes out of the ground like this Let's look at this this is so easy there you go didn't have to really pull really hard and the whole root came up I do wonder if in this plant's native range, there's perhaps a host specific parasite, like a species of insect that naturally keeps its numbers down. If that seems to be the case for a lot of the invasive weeds of the Intermountain West, we're just missing just one host specific parasite that will keep its numbers in check in its native range. If that were the case, there'd be a great potential to bring it over and use it as biocontrol. But then again, this is a euphorbia we're talking about, and there's some 2,000 species of euphorbia, including a few native to the Intermountain West. Because of that, there's potential that bringing this host specific parasite over would actually lead to it crossing the species very affecting the native varieties. So because of that, it may not be really worth bringing any of them over and risking harming the native varieties. 
I mean, again, I'm just speculating here. I don't know if it actually is real or not. Okay, so I hope you can hear me. But this is an example of what um, Euphorbia myrosinides looks like when it's young. See, it's still got the woody caudex, so it's not quite that young, but it's a young plant. And it's um, got most of the same features that it normally has. And up here you can see a younger one. This one, the stem is, the stem is still right on this one. So, yeah, that's, that's what it looks like when it's younger. This is Paxistema myrosinides, not to be confused with Euphorbia myrosinides. But I don't think that'd be possible because it looks completely different. It's also known as mountain lover and it's a pretty hardy evergreen uh, flowering plant you'll find in the Rockies and other parts of the West. And I really like it a lot. Again, it seems like a really resilient plant. You can see it has opposite leaves. Uh, so yeah, it's a member of the family uh, Celestraceae and otherwise I don't really know a whole lot about it. Other than that, it's pretty nice.